welcome to this edition of South Center's Chat. This is Tom Worley. I serve as director at Ohio State University's South Centers in Piketon, Ohio, where we do research and extension work uh, that's applicable not only to the region, but in Ohio and beyond. And indeed today, we're even focused on international work as our guest, Reedy Chatterjee from the uh, uh, country of India. Actually, the state is West Bengal, and Riti is a visiting PhD scholar in agricultural extension in uh, India, and she has come with us to uh, work uh, on behalf of the senior, as a senior research fellow uh, at the Center for Advanced Agricultural Science and Technology, a project that's funded by the World Bank in her country and for her institute. And she has been with us uh, the last uh, few months and has been very active in getting out to different conferences and so forth. So welcome, Riti. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Riti Chatterjee from India, from West Bengal. And uh, I'm doing my research mainly on the agricultural extension area and on the social ecology of the conservation agriculture. And uh, I came here at the Ohio State University South Centers at Python. Uh, in uh, January, and then I have started here my work. And uh, before the arrival of the COVID-19, I have uh, completed uh, most of my works here. And uh, through the slide uh, PowerPoint presentation, I will present the slides for you. That uh, how many things I have covered here. Let's start. Thank you, Rudy. Yes, as Reedy's bringing up the slides, uh, as you know, our yeah. center is focused on research and extension. So when I found out that Reedy actually was an extension type person, why I'm really excited and she's been very active in the extension area that uh, she's going to share with us through her PowerPoint slides at this point. So feel free, Reedy, uh, you lead on. This is the the first photo I have clicked here at this uh, College of Food, Agriculture and Environmental Sciences in uh, the Ohio State University main campus uh, at Columbus and in, the, in my first day of orientation. And here I came to work on the dynamics of social ecology of conservation agriculture in terms of energy, climate and knowledge management and community level perception under Do Dr. Rafiq Islam. Uh, at his uh, soil, water, and bioenergy resources program. And uh, under this program, I have uh, first attended uh, this annual conference of Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers Association, that is OPGMA, at uh, the JW Marriott, Columbus Airport area, on 22nd January of this year. And here I have interacted a number of farmers and uh, agency personnel and also I have attended the farmers fair at the end of the conference. So I was just overwhelmed in attending this first conference in USA. And after this conference, I have also attended another one, the Ohio's uh, largest sustainable food and farm conference, that is the OFA conference 2020, on a climate for change. And this uh, conference was um, at the Dayton, Ohio. And along with uh, Dr. Rafiq Islam, I have attended this conference with uh, Alan Sandrimir and Aaron Wilson also on uh, 13 to 15 February. And here, uh, one interesting thing that uh, I have also presented one uh, presentation on organic farming and Indian experience, where I have shared my experience in India on uh, organic farming and the case study I have presented there and uh, on a farmer who is uh, practicing organic farming over almost 10 years in a seven acre of land in mainly seedbed type of and the greenhouse type of structure uh, and uh, he is uh, raising almost 28 to 29 vegetables there and the, <clears throat> also the American farmers were too much interested after uh, viewing this presentation and uh, there i also mentioned one thing that in india sikkim is one of the state which has declared it as an organic state so the farmers of the us and the ohio was too much interested after um, knowing this they were asking me 
that how can be a whole state organic or what they did to become organic fully organic state and uh, i have answered them as far as i know then uh, they are also have meet a number of farmers and uh, <clears throat> i'm doing a survey so in that conference i have also done some part of my surveys with the farmers and agency personnel and uh, then i have also attended this 28th annual conservation tillage and technology conference at ohio northern university in ada on uh, 3rd march and here i also have also met number of farmers you can see from this photo i have clicked a photo with the farmers and they were too much cooperative in answering my questions for my survey here i have met almost over 100 farmers i have done my survey by distributing my survey questionnaire among them and they have answered very good and i'm too much satisfied with the cooperation in this conference and uh, as this conference is uh, too much important for me that is i'm doing uh, my research on conservation agriculture and this conference was on conservation tillage and technology so from this conference i have learned a number of technology and things because i have attended a number of presentation given by many speakers some professors from duha state university also so um, i'm just uh, too much uh, overwhelmed after attending this and uh, thank you to dr islam he has accompanied me and he <laughs> has carried me to these three conferences so these uh, three are uh, on my conferences and uh, after and uh, this is the cover letter or cover of my survey and uh, i was uh, doing my survey in offline mode before this covid 19 but uh, unfortunately due to these uh, unavoidable circumstances i have to shift my survey in online mode through google forms and using the osu Spark platform so now i'm doing my survey through this online mode and here i am also getting a number of responses day by day and in this case randall reader and also alan sandemir they're helping me in distributing my forms among the farmers the agency personnel and also dr rofik islam he is always helping me in this regard so this survey is also now also in a continuation i'm doing this and every day i'm getting responses from the farmers and this personnel. Great, uh, Rafi, uh, Riti, a uh, very uh, active uh, schedule that you've kept since you've been with us uh, attending the uh, various conferences. And uh, I guess I wanted to go back to uh, those various ones that you attended. And can you share how that might compare to such conferences or educational workshops that you would uh, be familiar with in your home country as to, you know, what's the same, what's different uh, relative to your experience here versus back home? Um, actually, uh, these experience of these conferences uh, in USA is uh, quite different because here the technologies are quite different and the, the um, way of talking and also but the overall uh, arrangement of the conferences are same but one interesting thing that i have noticed that farmers are all same it doesn't depend on the countries in my country india the farmers are too much interested to know and they are too much cooperative and here i have also found that here the farmers are also too much cooperative with me in fulfilling my survey I can't uh, feel that I am in another country and the farmers are from another country. They uh, help me uh, to uh, feel that quite homely here. So my thanks to these farmers and agents persons and all of them who helped me to get my survey done here and also helping me. Right. Well, that's uh, that's fascinating, and I think we find that the world over that farmers who uh, work with nature or are close to the land, producing food, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, very, you know, culture is in the word agriculture. And so that uh, idea 
of uh, being productive and working with nature uh, draws us all together at a common purpose, uh, no matter where in the world. And uh, you certainly hit upon that, that farmers are always uh, interested in learning something new that will enhance their ability to produce food in a more efficient and a more abundant way. And whether that's for their family members, as in uh, cases in many parts of the world, or as we do here, I think uh, one farmer feeds hundreds of people uh, uh, through his work. So that's an interesting comment uh, and observation. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I feel that I felt that they are doing a noble mission together worldwide. That's why they all of them are same. Yes. I feel that after coming here right. and right. this is the photo of our south center chat one which i have done with dr orley in second mm -hmm. march 2020 and many of people have already seen that one. Oh, great good good and i i think your other uh, uh comment about the differences in technology would you kind of elaborate you know i know you know you were with a variety of farm audiences from specialty crops people you know that uh produce fruits and vegetables at Ohio Produce Growers and Marketers to OFA, which tend to produce many, many different products, including livestock and field crops, but uh, in a more ecologically, perhaps organic in some cases, but certainly more of a sustainable conservation mindset to really ADA, which is the really the very large commercial farm operators. And uh, those are different levels of technology here, but compare some of that to the farm uh, attendees, what kind of technology would they be working with in, in India in a, in a general way, in a broad way? Yeah. And <laughs> this, uh, this is the um, photo taken by Jordan Maxwell uh, of our program. And uh, in this time, <laughs> we all are engaged in this aquaponic system in harvesting the, and uh, the planting of the lettuce. And uh, we are helping Jordan and Shivnath in this regard. And with me, there is also there are also Emily, Ryan, and Lulu. And uh, that time we enjoyed too much, but now I'm missing. I can't go south center. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the lettuce looks beautiful, uh, and I know it is a very high quality uh, product because it's grown in water, as you know, and uh, it doesn't. Um, you know, ever have any uh, a speck of dirt, you know, soil doesn't bounce up on it when it rains or you irrigate uh, and it's a con well, obviously controlled environment. So uh, it is a beautiful crop of lettuce and uh, we hope to return to this work uh, in our aquaponic system uh, later this month uh, if everything goes right. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to the continuation of that project. Uh, is there such a type of production in India, by the way? Yeah, actually hydroponics and aquaponics are also growing in India, mm -hmm. in a commercial scale also. Okay. But I don't know much about this because I'm not from this uh, aquaculture side. But mm -hmm. I know some people are growing aquaponics and hydroponics with fish also in commercial manner. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, do you have other uh, slides that you want to show, uh, Riti, as part of your presentation here? Yeah, sure. This one is the last slide. Uh, slide. Uh, and uh, this experience was totally new to me because uh, in this Nations Day, I have seen that the people next South Angers from different nations have came with the traditional foods. And uh, I was also too much lucky that in a single platform, I have <laughs> this opportunity to taste foods from China, from Malaysia, and from USA also. <laughs> I'm liking this American food. So I'm too much thankful to all of you that you have gave me this opportunity to interact with uh, many people from different nations and to eat their food and to know their culture. Because in this day, uh, we also celebrated uh, through many cultural uh, initiatives, like I have uh, done a song in this day, and Lulu has also <laughs> presented a song in Chinese language, and uh, Rafida also song. So that's why this day was uh, full of fun uh, to me. And 
perhaps this is the last uh, memory or last event i have enjoyed before this covid 19 lockdown at south center so right. uh, um, up to this right right well before we talk about that we'll talk about that just a little bit but uh question about the the food uh really uh in uh in general uh what's the comparison kind of between the the way food is prepared in india versus american uh the level of uh spices used and uh you know what's kind of traditional that you might comment on that for me just a minute yeah actually we mainly eat uh, more spicy food than american people uh, because we add uh, a number of spices like uh, cumin and coriander also turmeric and uh, the poppy seed we like too much the poppy mm -hmm. seed mm -hmm. is in our curry and uh, also uh, bay leaves and a number of uh, there is also a uh, spice which is called patch phone five spices all together we put in uh, our recipe so in that way indian foods are quite different uh, from the american foods and uh, we mainly eat the cooked foods raw foods taking raw foods is uh, quite not quite common wow. we generally take some of the foods in a raw form but maximum foods we take in the cooked form and uh, this is the only difference and in american foods these are sweeter and very light and lesser spicy which i have tasted till late but our foods are more spicy and uh, also sometimes uh, we add uh, and in many times we add this uh, chili to our recipes that's why it is more spicy yes. very well different. right 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 well i know you uh, uh shared some indian uh, foods with us as well and we learned from that uh, very much and of Thank course you. you know curry is a uh, major uh, taste uh, from india i think yeah 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 this yeah. was Navratno, which i have prepared for all of you <laughs> yeah it's a very nice it's photo nice vegetable. right right well yeah. i uh, i recognize that your experience in america is you're, you're going away with more than you really expected uh in terms of the situation we all faced uh since the middle of march uh, so roughly half of your time has been spent uh, kind of so-called at home, not being able to go out to the conferences as you did early on, not being able to come to campus and, uh, you know, experience much more of uh, the typical way we operate at the university. So I uh, trust, though, that the way that we tried to adjust to the new uh, way of operating including much greater use of what we're doing today that you're at your home i'm at mine two or three other people are on here that are helping us with the uh, broadcast today all from different locations and so we've managed to try to continue our work as best we possibly can at a distance and uh, try to still accomplish the same mission uh, in terms of education and sharing research sharing information and uh, trying to collaborate uh, with other partner organizations here in america i don't know whether you've had reports from india about how that compares to if you were back home in india whether you would have went through the same kind of a huge uh shift uh yeah. in your work and in your life there you might comment on that actually the situation has completely uh, make our life different that's why we have to follow different practices that's why mm -hmm. we are experiencing a different world presently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, you've, you've experienced at least a, a two different modes uh, here while you've been here. So that's what I say, you kind of got more experience than maybe you expected than, than any of us would have expected or been able to predict. And so uh, you want to make sure that uh, um, you, uh, you know, if you've kept a diary or a journal or at some point, you know, that you take notes and, you know, someday I think you'll have really a quite a story to share of your visit to the USA and uh, uh, some of the, you know, memories that you uh, will be able to take away with you. 
Uh, I think you mentioned that maybe this is the last PowerPoint slide that you had that you wanted to share. Yeah, yeah. This is the last PowerPoint slide because this is the last event I've attended at South Center. Right. Now, right. Um, almost two and a half months, I uh, was in uh, the shelter in home declared by the government of Ohio. And now I'm, I'm going out a little bit here and there in the locality in the Franklin County. I have go, I'm going in the Rose Park in Franklin County to see the blooming roses. And also uh, I have go, um, gone to the campus to see the blooming cherries and mm -hmm. the magnolia trees. Right. That's like. <laughs> right, right. Well, we have a, we have a few minutes yeah. left. Tell me, uh, Reedy, you mentioned you yeah. concluded with the survey of farmers that you uh, distributed. Do you have uh, some responses back from that survey? And uh, you know, how is that uh, unfolding for you as you've uh, put the survey into motion? Yeah, actually, uh, I have uh, previously. Um, I'm do I was doing the offline survey that is face to face survey i have uh, discussed with the farmers uh, sitting with them that how they are practicing conservation farming in their farm here in usa in also in ohio and what machineries they are using how they are doing their water management and uh, the residue management crop residue management and also um, how much training they have uh, attended regarding conservation farming and uh, their views regarding conservation farming that whether it is different from organic farming or not and what are the perceived barriers according to them and how they're seeing this ca or conservation agriculture as a future of farming and uh, they responded in a very uh, good in, in a way and i'm quite satisfied with the responses and uh, now due to this situation i have to shift the survey in online mode through using uh, the online survey platform. And now as I also receiving uh, many responses, already received uh, over 200 responses. And uh, every day responses are coming. Good. So I'm quite satisfied that at least in this bad situation, I can uh, continue my work uh, sitting home. Right. And thank right. you to all of them who have, uh, who have and who are helping me to gather my information. Also, uh, Dr. Islam and uh, Bradford Seman and uh, Alan Sanderman, Randall Reader, they are too much helping me to circulate my survey to continue my work. I'm too much okay. thankful to them. Well, good. I'm glad the survey response uh, came back uh, in a, a very positive way and that you've got a good uh, set of data that you can uh, summarize and draw some conclusions from uh, and hopefully will be informative as you return to India. I think you're getting uh, near the completion date of your visit uh, here at the end of June. And uh, so my presumption is that travel will be possible for you to travel back to your home country uh, as scheduled. Very good, very good. Well, Riti, uh, <laughs> till now I have not got my return ticket in the evacuation flight, so I'm waiting for the time I have to go to my country. Okay. That's why, because commercial flights are not operating between India and USA till now. That's why. Okay. Okay. Well, so, I hope that the, I hope that the logistics of the travel and, uh, you know, travel is always a little bit uh, stressful and uncertain at the very best, and under these times, I'm sure that's uh, doubly true. And uh, so I uh, uh, want to uh, just take a minute and congratulate you for uh, joining us and doing good work while you were with us and enduring the big change uh, that we've already talked about with the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation under which we had to more or less uh, uh, stop coming to our campus and uh, operate from home and use uh, technology uh, so much. So uh, certainly appreciate uh, having you with us. We've all learned from you. Uh, you can be assured of that. And uh, 
We really wish you the very best in your future career back in India. And uh, as you uh, make that trip home, hopefully all the memories will be good. Reedy, uh, any final thoughts that you want to share, please feel free to do so. I think we might have had a technical glimpse. I'm sorry, uh, folks, for that. Uh, Reedy's uh, connection may have uh, broken down uh, here in the with just a couple three minutes left. But uh, I would just uh, add to my prior comments that at our center in uh, Pike in Ohio, uh, we have uh, hosted many, many international scholars such as Reedy from uh, various places, from China, from Pakistan, from uh, Turkey, from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, just uh, name a country and, you know, it wouldn't be all of them, but we have many pins at a world map that uh, visitors have come from. And we always learn something from them that enhances our programs, because I think the broader perspective we have, the better we are at relating the worldwide situation and how other people are approaching some of the same obstacles and problems and issues that we do in our agriculture in our communities. And Reedy's been no exception to that. And I think she made very valid comments about farmers being uh, very similarly motivated, uh, no matter where in the world they operate. And that connection to one another and the willingness to come together and to share uh, is a hallmark of uh, folks in rural uh, America as west as the rest of the world. And as I've been privileged to visit a couple different countries, I found the same to be true, that uh, uh, when you get into rural areas, it's different than these, and that uh, you find an openness and a willingness to cooperate and to share information and exchange and eagerness to learn about how we function and operate here in America. Uh, regardless of what the uh, topic might be. And uh, it's very gratifying to learn these things and and uh, have those uh, to share as we return to our work back here in America. So with that, I think I'm going to uh, say thanks to Reedy one more time, and uh, we will be signing off, but we look forward to seeing you on another South Center's chat soon. Thank you so much for the time you spent in watching.